What's going on, broskies? My name's Shivoki, and welcome back to another Season 3 God Guide on Smite. Now, today, we're taking a look at my main chick, Hyrus Pixie Kitty, also known as Hell, the goddess of the underworld. Wait, that sounds kind of fucked up. I, I didn't mean that, Pixie. It wasn't meant to sound like that. Ugh, I love you. Anyway... Hell is an amazing goddess who is much better due to the pretty nice buff she just received in the mid-season patch. So, she has the ability to completely destroy the enemy team, yet she also is great at changing the tide of a fight that's not going so well with her great heals, movement speed buff, and of course her amazing cleanse. Now when I first started recording for this god guide, I'm not gonna lie, I really didn't like her and I also really didn't have fun playing her, but once I understood the mentality you needed to play her and what she does really well at, my team fight presence increased a crap ton. Now in this guide I will tell you my typical build for both Conquest and other game modes and also how to play this two-faced diva, what gods kick her booty, and whose booty will she be kicking. Now of course I'll go over everything that truly helped me enjoy playing Hell and overall having fun is really what's most important so I'll make sure you guys have fun playing her. Now be sure to leave your own tips, tricks, and build below in the comments down below and let me know what god needs a guide next. First let's take a look at her passive and abilities. Now Hell's passive is called Stance Attunement. When Hell's in a stance she gradually attunes the strengths of that stance, gaining up to 20% damage in the dark stance and 20% healing in the light stance. It's a buff ability and the time it takes to fully charge the stance is 3 seconds, which is very important guys. It just received a buff, it was 5, way too long and overall a pain in the ass. So now that it's 3 seconds guys, you can still chain stances a lot faster, but also still make sure you're holding on to the stance you need to be in. Now if you need to pop over from dark stance to light stance really quick there to pop a heal, you won't lose a 20% damage because it takes a couple seconds until the, uh, the the bar starts going down. So very important guys, I love this passive. Great damage boost and also a great healing boost for Hell. Now if you don't know already, Hell has a light stance and a dark stance, so in this case this move is called Decay or Restoration. Now Decay guys, Hell fires a projectile that explodes on contact, doing damage to all enemies in a 15 unit radius. And on the healing side of course, Hell fires a projectile that does damage to a single target and heals Hell on a successful hit. Very cool. The dark damage guys starts at 70 and max out at 270 plus 50% of your magical power. And light stance guys is the same exact thing, which is really awesome. Now the light heal guys, after you hit somebody with the light heal, you'll get a 230 heal, which is really, really cool. And the mana cost is only 90 at max rank with the eight second cooldown. This ability is very cool guys. I love the decay form. I'm not the biggest fan of the healing one, but then again, the heal is still very nice. But in Decay, when you throw the one out there and it does nice AoE damage to the whole team, you, you hit the whole team for like, you know, 300, 400, mid, middle, middle of the late game. Very good damage, and overall the heal really saves your ass pretty often, honestly. And it still does pretty good damage, so the damage is the same on both of them. But you have to keep in mind, though, you have the passive, which will increase the damage on Decay if you are in full form. Now in the comments down below, I want you all who are a rank 10 or a hell main to let me know if you agree with me. A good hell is to determine how they use hinder and cleanse. In my opinion, that is the number one thing about a good hell. If they can use hinder right, if they can use cleanse right at the right times, in the right situations, and completely change the team fight all together. Now hinder guys, hell debuffs all enemies at her ground target, reducing their magical protection and slowing them for a short time, which is amazing, but here's cleanse. Hell buffs all allies at her ground target, removing all crowd control abilities instantly and protecting them from future ones for a short time. Amazing. Overall an amazing ability guys. It allows you to put a debuff on the team and slow the enemies to do some serious magical damage to them of course. I love the hinder form of it but cleanse is my favorite guys. If Ares blinks in and ults your whole team and you pop cleanse on your whole team everyone's out of it. No one needs to use beads so if you have a team that's really working together and communicating this can save everyone's ass. If Fender grabs one of your allies, pop cleanse on them they're fine. Things like that guys, you can really save your beads, you can really save a lot of things. In some cases, it's like hell doesn't even need to get beads, or your allies your allies might not need to get beads if you have a really good hell who's constantly rotating. Now of course, the dark protection debuff is 25 at max rank and a 40% slow at max rank. Amazing. Now the dark lifetime is 3 seconds and the light CC immunity is for 1.25 seconds. So not too long, but plenty of time to kick some ass. The radius is 20, the mana cost is a max of 90, and the cooldown is a max of 10. Oh, well, Max rate is 10. So, a little CDR, you're kicking some serious ass all day long. Now, you can either be on Hell's good side or her bad side, and to be honest, I don't care because they're both fucking badass. Now, Repulse is her number three, of course, and Inspire as well. Hell conjures a burst of dark energy, damaging all nearby enemies. This is a giant explosion of dark matter that does great damage, pairs really well with Gemo Isolation, guys. It's a 30 radius explosion of badassery. Now, Guys, if I don't always build in isolation, but 
If you do, this is the ability to really get it. You can also pair it really well with the debuff and the slow from Hinder already. So it's just really fun cool. And the damage is also really awesome. You get 280 plus 70% of your magic power. And you're also looking at 20% more power from your passive, guys, if you are in full dark form. Very awesome. Now, Inspire is her light one. A burst of white matter soothes all nearby allies' pain, healing them and granting increased movement speed. Guys, this just got buffed. It's 25% movement speed at all freaking ranks. It's a six second, 25% movement speed buff. You also heal for 180 plus 40% of your magic power plus 20% if you are full heal form. It's insane, guys. Fucking awesome. I love this ability. With an 80 mana at max rank, 12 second cooldown, you'll be kicking ass all day long with a little bit of CDR. I love her. She is so freaking badass, guys. Now, as you guys know, Hell does not have ultimate. She switches stances. And in Dark Stance, Hell's abilities cause damage and she gains magical power. And may I add a little note to the side of that one? She gains a fuck ton of magical power. 60 magical power, if I may say, at max rank. It is insane, guys. You're also getting 20% more damage at full Dark Stance attunement. And that's not including overall items she has, giving her more power and more percentages. She hits like a fucking truck. And that's just Dark Stance. Here's Light Stance. Health abilities heal and support her allies, and she gains mana per five. Half of the benefits gained from the stance are also shared with allied gods within 30 units. She gets 35 mana per five at max rank, guys. That is a lot. So she's constantly gaining mana back and light stance. So you you guys are going to be leveling this ability every chance you have. There's no reason to turn down extra power and extra MP5. I love Hell. I truly do. One of my favorite god guys I've ever done. She's so fun to play and her abilities are just overall super, super cool. I love her kit. I love her face. And she reminds me of High Risk Pixie Kitty. And when it comes to leveling high risk Pixie Kitty's abilities, I definitely go this route. I'm always leveling the three and the one first. Good damage, good heals. She's all about sustain, guys, keeping herself up, keeping her allies up, doing good damage. Just to be this really scary thing to get near. And of course, you can also go a different, different route where you can level the two first before the one. But truly, I like the three and the one first, then the two. That's just me personally. And of course, every chance you have possible, please level the ultimate, guys. Do not turn down free power and free MP5. Amazing. So this is what I do. Go ahead and pause it here. Any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. And also, let me know your typical build when it comes to items, leveling, and all that cool stuff in the comments down below. Now, if I'm kicking ass, my team's kicking ass, we're all fed, I'm playing hell like a damn professional, this is what I'm building. I'm building Pen Boots, Chronos Pendant, Lotus Crown, Obsidian Shard, Rob Acepolis, and Rod of Tahuti. Good pen from two spots, a little bit of CDR, a, a little bit of uh, a shield from the Lotus Crown, and of course, two good healing items and Rod of Tahuti. Now, personally, I like playing her as a support, middle lane. I rarely play her in solo lane, but I have seen this build played by pros, both in solo, mid, and support. So, very, very cool stuff, guys. Personally, I think this is a good middle and, uh, and support build, in my opinion. Or also just a really good arena, conquest, uh, all game mode, this really works, honestly. I've played this, this build in multiple situations. I love it. Now, of course, this doesn't work in all situations. You might need situational items, and that's why they're called situational items, if you need it the defense, swap out the Cronus Pendant for Breastplate of Valor. That's kind of obvious, guys. Now, any questions, please ask me. But truly, I love this build. It just does, does really well for me. I got a lot of healing, the good shield, and honestly, this build allows her to be this complete badass in team fights. Goes in there, she constantly has a shield up, which can save your allies in so many ways, and the healing is super crazy, and this also kind of forces the enemy team to build anti-heals, which is also a good thing for you in some cases, because if they don't build it, they're fucked. If they do build it, then they're kind of wasting their time going against that. So it basically makes them do something you want them to do, which allows your team to counter that. So really cool stuff. I love this build. Any questions, any comments, concerns, please let me know. But let's check out my other builds really quick here. Now, another build I use sometimes, guys, this one right here. I go Pen Boots, Book of Toth, Breastplate of Valor, Rob Sapolis, Spear of Desolation, and Rod Tahuti. Personally, I like this build a lot. It's cool because while I'm building stacks, I have the defense uh, building up from Breastplate of Valor. Ravisepolis is always so well and so amazing for a team fight. It really allows me to heal extra, and overall the power is really nice on it. Spirit Desolation will help me hit way, way harder. Good penetration, and Rod Tahuti, of course, is just amazing overall. So this is sometimes, this is usually what my build looks like at the end of a game. In most situations, if I'm doing really well and I need to buy situational items, I usually go this route. Also, Celestial Legion Helm is also pretty good too, but this is just my other uh, mid build. And here are my situational items. A few of you guys do not understand what situational items really mean, so I'm going to explain it real quick. If you don't need situational items, don't build them. If you don't need 
Death Isolation, if you don't need Breast of the Valor, if you don't need Celestial Legion Helm, don't build it. It's not needed. But if you do need it and you can see a use for it and you're, you're trying to counter something, go ahead and build these items. Now, I swap out Chronic Pendant for Breast of the Valor quite often because sometimes she needs the physical defense. A very, very good item. Celestial Legion Helm is good to stop crits. It's good for power and overall a really good ability. Bulwark of Hope helps you get extra shield if you actually, for some, some reason, need the magical the defense. This is a good item to grab because it also gives you the shield. Extra health is also very nice for support slash kind of middle lane character. Gem Isolation is so amazing. I love it, guys. Really good for slows and being a complete bitch with your number three in team fights. Of course, extra pen to stop your team and a Warlock Sash if you want to build stacks but you still need to be a little tanky. This is what I go. Now, these are my typical Relic Sky Sanctuary Purification Beads Sprint or Meditation. I love these ones. Personally, I'm usually going Sanctuary and Purification, but if I'm fed, my team's kicking ass, I might go Sanctuary and Sprint, Sanctuary and Meditation. And I'm definitely, if I'm, a, if I'm a dual lane support and my hunter is having mana issues, I'll go Meditation to constantly keep his mana up, to keep him in lane. And also, it's, it's also a good heal in case my heal is down for whatever reason. Now, if I'm fed, I'm kicking a lot of ass, I love going Sprint after Beads or after Sanctuary. And the reason is because her heal buff, guys, or her movement speed buff, on her heal plus a sprint is an insane boost of speed guys crazy it allows you to get the complete opposite side of the map really fast it also allows you to be really annoying and moving moving really fast in team fights and overall just a really cool thing but usually i'm going sanctuary purification or sanctuary sprint that's just me personally and lastly guys is god she's good against and gods that she's bad against Truly, I think she's amazing against Agni, Bacchus, Mercury, Hopwa, and Ra. The reason is because she has a cleanse. She has the ability to constantly get out of their ultimates. If you see an Agni about to pop his ultimate, pop cleanse. If you see a Bacchus going in uh, to burp everybody, pop cleanse. If you see a Mercury going in for an ult or for a grab, pop cleanse. Like, everyone's just fucked with her, with her abilities. They're constantly countered. A good hell can counter these guys all game long. I love it. Now, gosh, she's really bad against... Shanga, Nox, Bakasura, Bastet, and Sobek. Sobek because he has the three, which is a pain in the ass for healers. I love Nox against her, sadly, because the silence fucks her up all day long. Of course, that's just kind of typical. Shanga will outheal her and outdamage her. In most cases, Hell can't outheal her, but Shanga can definitely outdamage her. Now, Bakasura has an amazing ultimate, and Bastet is Bastet. She's a bitch, so. That's it, guys, for the God Guide. Please be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Comment down below any questions, comments, concerns, your own tips, your own thoughts, all that stuff, guys, in the comments down below. If you enjoyed it, guys, please subscribe for more content from your broski, Shivoki, and I love your motherfucking faces. Deuce, motherfuckers. Deuce, ah.